This is Saturday Morning Mysteries. And we're your hosts, Alexis and Grace. Hello, good morning, and welcome back to another episode of Saturday Morning Mysteries, where we're your hosts. I'm Grace. And I'm Alexis. And we are back to our arc that we had started this year off with. We spent the Mm -hmm. last two episodes doing a very special 100th and 101st episode celebration Mm -hmm. with Scooby-Doo. But hopefully you missed our 15-foot great white shark uh, shenanigans that we've had. Oh, yeah, shenanigans. Hero with Jabberjaw. Um, We're back for three more episodes with this, um, you know interesting show a recently reviewed show by one austin bird <laughs> who described jabberjaw as avant-garde abstract oh abstract yeah. sorry yeah. Stephanie, stephanie bird said our yeah, show is my... avant-garde the bird family really um we're some artsy folks it's highbrow we, we are we are we um <laughs> we go to the louvre every weekend and <laughs> Travel to Broadway plays just whenever we feel like it. Mm -hmm. And yes, mm -hmm. this makes sense. This makes sense. So yes, abstract. Sorry, abstract. Yes. uh, Misremember the review. You know, he he maybe it's possible he wanted to say avant-garde, but he thought that that was maybe a little too avant-garde to use. (laughs) He thought it was too redundant. It had already been done by Stephanie. Right. He's he's always looking for the next new thing. (laughs) Exactly. Um, wow. And it's which is um, Jabberjaw. Uh, Alexis Bird's week, the the final Bird's week to uh <laughs> continue our arc. So I'm just gonna pass it to you to um get a get abstract with it, you know? Yeah, and it is an abstract episode. I really I dived in here, I dove in and I mm-hmm. broke it down the dramatic structure of this episode. <laughs> It's a three act episode we're going to get through here. (laughs) Uh, No, but really this episode is just as ridiculous as the rest of them. I thought you were actually being serious that you actually wrote your like like, script of this review, like in a three act arc. And it just happened to be like perfect timing that we talked about it like this. Um, To be fair, I did write it in a five part dramatic structure. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not actually joking. I'm dead ass serious. I was like part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. And then like gave them each their own little title. Amazing. Well, tell us the because... title every time. It'll be like okay. every like Wes Anderson film that it just will. like pops like the title. it on the screen. Yeah. We're gonna have like random exposition shots and stuff. <laughs> Very bright colors, pastels. It's coming upon spring. It's gonna, gonna be get... abstract. We're not really gonna know the plot. <laughs> Honestly, that's why I had to do it in a five part thing. I realized because <laughs> these episodes are so confusing that my scripts were so so long, and I was like, I need to break this down. I need to Honestly, like smart chop it up because it's a lot, and my script is so long. So bear with me, but it's Great. it's Let's like a it. hundred words shorter than usual. <laughs> So, part one of this episode of Jabber Jump. Uh-huh. <laughs> Season one, episode 15, <laughs> The Piranha Plot. <laughs> okay. This is where it all begins is how I have titled part one. <laughs> the gang is on their way to yet another gig. This one in a lovely country called Amster Aqua, okay. a.k.a. Amsterdam. Okay. As per usual, the gang, they're short on cash and they are angry at one another. And this gig is their last resort to make some money. And hopefully, you know, in this farewell tour <laughs> on a high note, it is the second to last episode of the se- of the series. So they ah. are really at their wits end here. <laughs> book, er, book, Biff, who is the booker for them, has mm. also got them tickets and booked their passage to Amster Aqua by way of an oil tanker, <laughs> which of course they took it from Petrol Aqua, <laughs> right there. 
<laughs> exactly. Honestly, oh, I didn't even think about that. I wish, I hope that that was episode 14. How amazing would it be if that was the episode <laughs> before this? It's like, no, right. literally, jump they just left so the oil much. country. But we what do. if the actual episodes were actually all connected geographically in this made up world and we just never realized it? We never saw it. See, the one time I don't have my insane like Charlie Day style map over here of like. Because it would be too, everything else would be too insane on it. It would, it would. I, they, we have those maps just for like the characters themselves, let yeah. alone like tying the whole series together. Under and water world my now. brain already hurts trying to do it. <laughs> So yes, they're on this oil tanker, which of course has cheap seats, cheap tickets, and they, Shelly pr primarily, is not happy about it. Mm -hmm. She's like, I can't believe we're on this gross oil tanker, which, yeah, Shelly, okay, I agree. It is kind of ridiculous <laughs> that they're writing. <laughs> but yeah, you write. You, you ain't wrong. You ain't wrong. And also, they're talking about how, you know, they're so excited. Biff is saying he's so excited for this next gig in Amster Aqua. And look, this gang, they're they're so like out Ate of sync with one another. <laughs> yes, because Clam is like, Amster Aqua, I thought we were going to Hawaii. And Biff is like, no, no, no. That gig fell through, aka he <laughs> fucked something up. And that or it was like a sham the whole time. It was he got frauded, like D Biff got defrauded. They probably thought they were gonna do like the festival of circuit in Hawaii, and it ended up being like fire festival. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, oh shit. There were uh, that fell through. The dude's getting sued right now. It's a whole thing. Yeah. We're going to answer up once. <laughs> But like all of them are wearing like Hawaiian gear or at least like Jabber and Clam are right. Glam that are, I think like they're the grass skirts, the like legs oh my and everything. And they're like, oh, I was really excited to go there. I thought we were going to go there. This sucks now. Like, again, they're all out of sync. Biff is bad at communicating both their gigs and their uh, travel plans. Yeah, it's not going great. It's a mess. It's a mess. And then everything begins to get even worse. Because uh, as the gang is bickering and fighting, they look up and they see a monster of a ship, a massive ship approaching the oil tanker. And this thing, it's like two times bigger than the tanker. And the only way that I can really describe it is like a massive cruise ship looking thing with like two uh -huh. little sails or antennas on the back of it that make it okay. look like fins. So oh, it actually okay. from far away looks like a fish. Oh, but okay. Like in the shape of like an underwater cruise ship. All right, of. I'll take it. So, but it's massive and it's got this um this door at the at the bow of it or at the front of it that opens up into the cargo load of the ship, but the door is shaped like razor sharp teeth. Oh. Also, so, how hard was it for you to say bow in front of ship instead of back? It was ship? very hard when I was <laughs> typing it. When I was typing it, yeah, I was like, this is stern the hell, which one? I'm always confused. We're we're turned okay. around. Uh, anyway, yes. So this thing, it has like razor sharp teeth on the doors to make it look okay. not like just any fish, but by, but like oh. a piranha. I forgot the, the monster ship. In the episode. In the monster ship is being captained by none other than a super villain named. The piranha. <laughs> He's friends with Commander Shark for sure. Yes, hundred thousand percent, hundred thousand percent. Because we're going to describe this guy in a minute and how oh, no. much Commander Shark walked so that the piranha could run. Okay, or could this swim. sounds way better. Yeah, I could swim. But before we describe the piranha, the baddie mm. of this week's episode, <clears throat> let's for just a brief moment here, real quick, talk about. Piranha, real world piranha, actual Hell yes. piranha, and distinguish our baddie from the real deal. Yes. And so, disclaimer, all of the info here is obviously pulled from Wikipedia and brief recollections that I have from an episode of Tooth and Claw where yes. they talk about, <laughs> I love that podcast, thank you for introducing it to me. I was going to ask if you listen to, to the it, piranha episode. I did, and I was, that's partially why I wanted to do this episode, because that's one of my favorite ones. Like, they yes. just gave so much good information. That and, like, their bat episode are, which, again, then I turned around and did a bat episode as well for <laughs> uh, Thornberry. So, practically, this is just a Tooth and Claw fan account at this point. <laughs> Truly. Um, um, so, yes, pretty much. 
Piranha. Let's talk about them. A piranha fish. It's a variety of fish, all of a certain like family and species. So there's not just like one type of piranha, but mostly they inhabit South American rivers, floodplains, lakes, and reservoirs. And although they are predatory and they do have a very violent and bloody reputation of feeding on fish and fresh meat, their diet actually varies and they often also eat plant materials. So they are technically mm. omnivorous or omnivorous, mm. however the fuck you pronounce <laughs> that science word. But of course, they are still very violent and dangerous. They did get that reputation somewhat for a good reason. More on mm. that in a minute. Um, but they do have also one of the strongest bites found in any bony fish. And they also have very, or I should say this is due to them having very large jaw muscles and finely serrated teeth. So like little razor teeth that they've mm. got. And so depending on the species of piranha, they're very tiny, but they can range anywhere from five inches to 14 inches long. Although there is one oh. species that has apparently grown up to 20 inches. So I mean, at its okay. absolute largest, a piranha will be maybe still a little bit less than two feet, which actually two feet, that's pretty long. Yeah, it's like, pretty big. But like five inches, not too big, but those goddamn razor sharp teeth, it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. how big they are with their jaw strength, they bite a lot harder than you would think given their size. Mm -hmm. But in general, piranhas typically do not attack humans. And when they do, it often only results in minor injuries to like the feet or the hands, the parts of your body that are like splashing around in the water. But there have been a lot of serious and even fatal attacks from piranha in the past. So again, it's like mm -hmm. trying to weigh the good and the bad here. Are they as dangerous <laughs> as everyone thinks they are? Not really. But yes, they still have killed people in the past. So don't they mess need to around keep with their them. reputation up. They do. They're At least like, like a have... little. Yeah, it's like, look, we won't kill anyone this year, but like, we're going to attack this group of 20 swimmers and just yeah, like, we got to like name a couple up. people. Exactly. Exactly. We do, they do have a reputation to withhold, but contrary to popular belief and to that reputation, blood particularly does not actually attract piranha. Like mm -hmm. people sometimes think it does like, yeah, you throw bloody meat in the water and they'll come get it. Not necessarily. Instead, they tend to attack when there's either food scarcity and like they're in dense schools or there's like overcrowding mm -hmm. when there are uh, low water levels and they start to panic <clears throat> and get a little anxiety or when someone is like fiercely splashing around them and mm -hmm. swimming. So, for example, if you see like, a, I don't know if you can really see them coming towards you because they swim underwater, but if for some reason you see something coming towards you in the water and you start splashing to mm -hmm. like get it away, a piranha is more likely to attack you then than if you're just literally standing in the water and like looking around because mm -hmm. the splashing makes them anxious, makes them want to attack. I guess it's probably more like a defensive mechanism for them than anything. Yeah. And finally... My last fun fact about piranha, real world piranha, and I think maybe one of the most interesting facts is where this bad reputation came from in the Ooh, first yes. place. Yes. Just like everything else bad in this world, it came from a United States president and the result <laughs> of, pro of propaganda that they pushed. Is <laughs> the piranha? Yes. Specifically, U.S. President <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt, the great Should've adventurer, known. exactly, as many knew him, this dude was always out on expeditions, westward expansion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When he visited Brazil in 1930 for an expedition through the Amazon rainforest, he was trekking along the banks of the river, the Amazon River, and he witnessed a cow being torn apart and skeletonized by a school of hungry piranha. And he went on to describe this viciousness and this attack in his 1914 book, Through the Brazilian Wilderness. Mm. But here's the thing about what he saw. This whole spectacle, it was just that, a spectacle. <laughs> the farmers in that area of the Amazon rainforest had blocked off, knowing that Theodore Roosevelt was coming to town or coming to uh -huh. you know, do an exped expedition through the area, they blocked off part of the river where he was going to be days before and starved the piranha in the river, in that portion of the river for several days before they pushed the cow into the water just as Theodore Roosevelt was Oh my God. By. 
And that cow was then obviously quickly devoured by the school of fish. Because like I said before, one of the times that piranha are going to attack is when there's overcrowding and food scarcity. And they had both of those in this situation. So the so piranha made a PR some... stunt for their <laughs> yeah. reputation. They did. Exactly. This is where it all began. They were in on it. They knew. They were like, people <laughs> aren't going to fuck with us anymore. But yes, so this wasn't some random day in the life of a piranha in the Amazon. This was actually like animal cruelty and exotic propaganda, essentially, aka piranha PR. <laughs> and we're gonna <laughs> they were like... Let him know. know. Let him know. <laughs> Let Theodore know. I want They're him paying... to know it was me. <laughs> the piranhas paid off the farmers. Yes. They're like, no, nah, this is how you build exactly. the dam. Like, hold me back. Hold me back. <laughs> Just in a couple more days. We're going to get him. We're going to get him. We're going to get him. I promise you. We won't eat any of your bait anymore. I promise. This is like yeah. mutually beneficial for both right. of us. Piranha the U.S. isn't going to come in here and try and take this land. They're going to be too scared of us. <laughs> It'll help you farmers. We also got to exactly. make, we got, we're taking Piranha International. <laughs> international, baby. We're going uh -huh. big. We're going big. People all over the world will fear our name. <laughs> They'll shake and shiver every time they dip a toe into any body of water, wondering, it worked. Are piranha here? It worked. <laughs> it did work. Because I'm pretty sure growing up, I thought that like piranha were any in any body of water. Yeah. Like, oh, Ohio like River. Eating. Oh, no. Don't want to fall into the licking river at rowing. We're going to get eaten by piranha. There's other monsters in there yeah. for sure that are Blue. way worse. I'm more afraid of blue green algae than I yeah, am of exactly. piranha. <laughs> but like, I absolutely also was like, oh yeah, piranha, they will eat you alive. They will. Yeah, no doubt. They're so. everywhere. It was like that and quicksand is like what you have to watch out for. Yes. As I was almost certain of it back in the 90s. Yes, so, exactly. Yes. So that is our fun little spiel on wow, real amazing. world piranha, which are actually awesome. I could have put more information on like specific attacks and stuff in here and all that, but nah, let's just talk about how cool piranha are and not about how actually dangerous and violent they can be. No, I mean, we're going to. I'm going to do a number to their PR here, okay? <laughs> they're actually cute, adorable little fish. They're going to... Nothing to fear. They're going to swim from the Amazon River out to the Pacific, <laughs> all the way around to the Atlantic. Come through the Chesapeake Bay. Come through Bay. the Chesapeake Bay. Yep. Yeah. Come. You're fucked. Down the Anacostia. Yeah, I am <laughs> fucked. That's, uh, they're going to like start popping out of my like bathtub or something. They're like, we will yeah. find a way into your home, Alexis Berg. Yeah, we will get goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. This may be the last you ever hear of me. The this piranhas is, did it. They're going to erase this footage. I was going to say, this is the real piranha plot. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this, this episode of Jabberjaw. Yes. It's a larger conspiracy, and I'm in the middle of it. Um, Not for long. Secret agent Jabber, please come save me. So <laughs> let's discuss the piranha, though. And this yes. is obviously the, the megalomaniac supervillain of the underwater world in the year 2076, the villain of mm. this episode. Um, the piranha, he's a little bit different from real world piranha in mm. the sense that he is a humanoid fish hybrid type being is the best that I can describe him. AKA, it's not a costume? No, there is a <laughs> costume, but he is like half fish. So oh. he is... I he... mean... It was only a matter of time before we got that in this I know. You know, series. It's episode 15. At this point, they knew they weren't getting renewed. <laughs> they were like, look, we've only got one more episode after this in the tank. Let's give them everything the we've tank. got. <laughs> but <-oom> <laughs> um, so what they gave us in this mm. act of desperation maybe they <laughs> maybe they were like either set us free from this ridiculous show or please give us one more opportunity to prove that we can we can rock with jabber jaw okay what they gave us was a villain who's standing on two legs he's probably about six feet tall he's got two arms he's got a mouth he's got a nose much like a human but he's got greenish gray skin reptile like eyes like their yellow eyes with the black slits oh, going straight yeah. down the middle of them and he's got piranha teeth um but he's only got like 10 of them like spread out they're like these very sharp pointy teeth just spread out throughout so he sounds slightly mouth. more like a 
snake human with piranha teeth. You're right. Actually, and even with the teeth, so the teeth are sharp, but they're so scarce that it actually looks more like a snake. You're right. Now that you say that, he's got, he's a, but he's called the piranha. So, I mean, call me crazy for thinking that they were trying to make him look like a piranha. (laughs) I am calling you crazy to make you, uh, that you thought there would be a logic. Exactly. Yeah, that's actually... That's totally on me. Yeah, <laughs> I accept is. this. I accept this. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me? We are we are four episodes. This is our fifth episode of Jabber Doll now, I think. What, six? Yeah, yeah, yeah. six episodes. I'm all mixed up. I should know by now that there is no You know what? The longer. piranha, he's abstract. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants us to know it. <laughs> he's like, I love being abstract. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, perhaps he is because so that's his appearance. But let's talk about what he's wearing. Let's talk about oh, right. the fit, okay? Because it gets a little more avant-garde. Perhaps <laughs> he's got on like a gray bodysuit with a mask that I guess maybe maybe it's kind of like a balaclava. The mask okay. covers most of his face, so you only actually see his nose and his mouth. But the okay. top of the mask is like shaped for a piranha with like okay. a fin at the top. Oh, and I did also forget to mention that he has like elf ears. <laughs> <laughs> Which neither a snake nor piranha nor have. Piranha okay. has. <laughs> exactly. Abstract. But also because like the helmet or the like the mask, bodysuit mask thing that he has, has like the ears like built into it, to like the ears. Oh, like okay, all. great. Fine. So at first I couldn't tell if it was his head or not, but then it zooms out of him and you see like he's got gray going all the way mm. down on his legs and his arms, except for a very nice like green vest of armor with okay. like a piranha mouth emblem on it. And then okay. <laughs> long red gloves, of course, we love <laughs> nice leather gloves accessorize yeah accessorize and the last and final accessory a red cape but like not a long one it's awkward it only comes down like halfway down his back it's for function not fashion not for fashion exactly it's for function you know how hard it is to walk in a full cape to swim Uh, in a full cape to steer Uh -uh. a massive ship in a full cape Uh -uh. it's tough okay it's hard and they don't protect you no we need half capes okay you want something to flow in the wind but not but not to get tangled up in your fishy snake legs but it's it's weird though because every time i see it i think he looks like a little um he looks kind of like a toddler playing like pretend <laughs> like with a little fake cape. You know? it's, so it's just little. like a little like towel. It looks like it looks more like a shawl than like a cape. Like, <laughs> it's so short. It's very like I can't wait for you to watch it and see because it literally like I'll be damned if it comes down like past his lats. It's literally oh like, no. <laughs> short great I'm like, okay so it's a coat it's like maybe here it's not in the coat it's like if it were a full coat it would be a crop top grace it's still yes. would like show this belly button like, i'm thinking like um i don't know like i don't even know what era it was but like there was a coat at one point that was like a crop top like shawl like thing that had like buttons on the chest oh Huh. In like Regency time or something like that, but it still had a front to it. It wasn't just yeah. Like that. You know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna. Why am I questioning it? Why, why are you all asking so many questions about <laughs> about this show? we told you the Grace snake and I told piranha you the man first... <laughs> with elf ears or, <laughs> with elf ears ears or like something? God. I don't know. You know what? Yeah, mm-hmm. I rescind. Strike from the record, please. The previous yes. it three has statements been I made. Great. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> so that is the piranha a little different from real world piranha but close i see the inspiration that the writers had quite frankly in this piranha the <laughs> piranha <laughs> okay fine go ahead. he lurks deep in the crater of an underwater volcano his lab of domed off and protected from the dangers of the outside world and he spends his days with his mini henchman and his hand, aka lead advisor, Gregor. And Gregor, by the way, just looks like um, an older Asian man. He is not. <laughs> he is not half reptile, half 
piranha, half okay. human, anything. He is just fully a man, just, just a dude, <laughs> just this dude who I guess you know had some evil ideas and needed a paycheck. Oh, um, don't we all? You know, like, honestly, <laughs> Gregor, same. <laughs> 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 Gregor's the most relatable character in this whole show so far. He is. And he's calling all the shots. He is like <laughs> the piranha points a finger, Gregor executes the plan. Mm, but okay. together, obviously under the piranha's leadership and authority, of course, though, this team, they build rockets and they build all types of like surrender myths, they call it, and other random weapons of mass destruction that will aid in the piranha's ultimate plan of ruling the underwater states of America. Oh! And so, yes, yes, we're bringing it home. I told you, hey, all right, we're going to do a lot of America shit talk in this episode, okay? We started by shit talking Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> and he was <laughs> I don't work for the federal government anymore. I'm a freaking... <laughs> I can say whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway though the rockets that the piranha builds in this lab in this underwater volcano they happen to require an exotic fuel and unfortunately it's kind of hard to come by so they have to uh turn their heads to piracy essentially to try to fuel all of these rockets that they're building okay. and gregor the hand of the piranha, he has arranged for a specific tanker to be <laughs> sieged mm. and its payload stolen. And just as the oil <laughs> tanker comes into range, the piranha orders a captor ship to welcome the tanker, okay, aka kidnap and steal <laughs> the tanker. <clears throat> and of course, can you guess what tanker this is? <laughs> the tanker you know of the piranha's choosing. I will say it's slightly going better than I thought because w- yeah, when so? you first said that the Neptunes were on an oil tanker and then there's a giant ship over them, I was like, oh, so they're going to explode this tanker. And that's how the Neptunes end. That they're currently probably smuggled away. What a away metal on. way to go, like in an yeah. underwater explosion of an oil tanker. Right. And again, the Neptunes, even though you said they're like passengers on this ship, Biff mm-hmm. absolutely paid off like someone working in like the engine room to be like smuggled in to Amster Aqua on this <laughs> ship. So there's yeah. no record of them being on it besides the filmmakers making this film about them. Exactly. And they're going to die too in a fiery, in a fun- oily <laughs> death right state. now. <laughs> yeah. So just being kidnapped, I was like, oh, okay, great. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Well, you know, put a pin in that. Because worse. This is also just like the first, I don't know, three to five minutes of the episode that this <laughs> happens. So don't worry. Like there will be it gets more danger. <laughs> it gets a lot worse. <laughs> So they're gonna wish for their fiery deaths and flames. They will soon enough. They may want freedom now, but oh boy, oh boy, hindsight is a bitch. Let me tell you. <laughs> so, so yes, we guessed exactly which oil tanker the piranha has set his sights on. He needs that payload so that he can fuel his own rocket, a rocket that is carrying loads of surrender mist that he will then spray over the United Underwater States of America to then take control. So essentially, we've got WMDs here, ladies and gents. Jabberjaw (laughs) is dabbling into uh, weapons of mass destruction and just mass terrorism. I mean, no surprise. Classic. Classic. So, (laughs) act two... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what's it called captive in the piranha's cave <laughs> so, so i had so much fun writing this script so, <laughs> the piranha ship pretty much opens the mouth slash door the piranha shaped door at the front of it and just swallows the entire oil tanker Great. into his ship so it just like you know, swims, a ship, a sub, it floats. I don't know what you do underwater. 
towards the oil tanker uh-huh. and just literally the tanker just like goes right into it and it just closes Great. and swallows it. Great. Easy. So the shin, easy, super, super easy. Greg, Gregor knows how to do this. This is not his first rodeo. Exactly. The, sh- the ship then takes back off to the Piranha's headquarters in the center of that underwater volcano. And when the dust settles after this mass kidnapping and act of piracy goes down, Mm. the gang is able to kind of like sneak out of the oil tanker onto the deck of it and look at like, wow, where are we? Where have we been taken? And get a sense of where they are, which now is inside of the Piranha's lab. Mm. And they overhear overhear slash oversee Gregor talking, Gregor, Gregor, I don't know. Never mind. I was going to make a Game of Thrones reference. We're going to keep it moving. And yeah, keep, few, keep going. And a few henchmen taking all of the tanker's crew prisoner and telling them that they're now being held captive by the piranha. And so the gang, they're like, oh, the piranha, this must be the weirdo who did all this. Like, we got to find that guy. He's who we need uh-huh. to stop. And so upon Shelly's suggestion, perhaps through her powers of suggestion, <laughs> The gang decides to check around the ship to find out exactly what kind of trouble they're in, a.k.a. Wait. snoop around and figure out who is behind the heist or like where the piranha is hiding. What? Have the guards taken them off the ship yet or are they sneaking off before the guards get to them? No. So the guards. OK, like you they're said, just like, welcome. We have like a European prison system. You get a lot of outdoor time. It's an you open air nice, prison. Yeah, you have nice bunks. <laughs> We give you scones in the morning. (laughs) Do you want Evian water or life water? Which one? They like have a lot of We're out of San Pellegrino this morning. I'm sorry. Sorry. We only have tap, actually. Is that going to be a problem? (laughs) Is that okay? Yeah. Good thing it's not like a Brazilian prison. Oh, God. No. Uh, Yeah. You're okay. We're not going to shit on Brazil today. Um, Anyway. So. no, dang it. Wait, I was going to say something right before she got that, and it was going to be really funny, but oh, well. I'm sorry. So, oh, no, wait, so you, yeah. asked the, you asked the question about how yeah. um, how they're even, like, out of the ship. So it goes back exactly to what you said with, like, they're not on the, not the manifest, what do you call it? Like, their names are nowhere on Yeah, it'd be like the ship's them. manifest. They on. Yeah, like, they, they may have been smuggled onto this ship. So the piranha yeah. doesn't even know that they were on there. He literally <laughs> thinks it was only the crew. And so the, the henchmen only take the crew. Yeah. Hell yeah, like, great. We see, the, we see the crew in handcuffs being, like, led out by the henchmen and Gregor. Uh-huh. And I don't know where... Where were they hiding? I think that the Neptunes were hiding maybe in like a locker somewhere in the tanker. So the henchmen either didn't see them or they also weren't expecting to find them because they were smuggled on. And they're like kind of just peeking out of like, you know, peeking over the deck when they hear Gregor taking everyone else prisoner. So, yeah, that's that's why they are not captive as well. Great. Your theory holds up here that yeah, Biff definitely did not get them tickets. (laughs) (laughs) Biff is Biff and Clan are both like crime always pays off. Not crime always pays, it pays off. We did fine. We weren't (laughs) captured. Exactly. Like that was the point of all this. We're halfway to Amster Aqua and we're still alive and not prisoners. So yeah, this is going fine. It works for them. So yes, at this point, they're snooping around the piranha's lab and his headquarters. And they happen upon his rocket, this thing that is filled with surrender mist. And they see it currently being filled with fuel from the oil tanker that they just got off of. Mm. And at this point, they start to realize that some larger conspiracy must be afoot. Mm -hmm. And they decide to then hide somewhere in the headquarters while concocting a plan to catch the head honcho, a.k.a. the piranha. Great. And so just as the gang hides away in the ship's machine shop of all places. Okay. They hear an announcement coming over the ship's PA system. Like, it's like the midday announcement. (laughs) But it's funny. It's like the PA system and a TV because a TV turns on near them. And we just see Gregor (laughs) standing there saying, silence, the piranha wishes to speak. And then he like gets off the screen and the piranha takes the stage. This is like elementary school morning announcements with like the front desk. Or like assistant exactly. principal exactly. putting the main principal on. Exactly. And, and what does Honestly the principal cute. say? It is really cute, actually. 
Uh, the piranhas, he makes his announcement here. He says, our moment of victory is close at hand. The rocket is ready to launch in 20 minutes. <laughs> Very soon. Wow, okay. And then he says, soon it will spread my surrender mist throughout the capital of the underwater states of America. Their leaders will be helpless and forced to surrender to me. And he actually <laughs> says it like that. <laughs> He's having fun. He is. I love this guy. I think that's why I had so much fun writing the script because the piranha he's, is having he's so He's having much, fun. He's having fun. It's <laughs> contagious. <laughs> yeah, the prisoners, they're having fun too. They're Everyone's getting loving this. Outside yeah. basketball time in their prison. <laughs> They're all like out there lifting. Fun. You see them like the conveyor belt of them like fueling up the rocket. They're like <laughs> dancing to like I don't know, like Earth, Wind, and Fire or something. Just like some super upbeat. Fun I'm actually picturing playing. the gasoline scene from Zoolander <laughs> with the wham, wake me up A before you go go. <laughs> okay, <A> jitterbug. Yeah, <laughs> gasoline <laughs> <my> fight. <laughs> <laughs> orange mocha frappuccino and they're all dressed in those outfits <laughs> having a great you know what this is a fun work environment <laughs> this is i like this the piranha he would be fun to work for so <laughs> yeah um he bringing it back to commander shark real quick <laughs> he used to work for commander shark but he got out of there he did not like the hostile work environment no, commander shark. And he's like, not at all. i'm gonna do it differently what's another dangerous fish that everyone <laughs> fears the piranha. the piranha i'm gonna do things my way <laughs> and now they're over there singing wham wake me up before you go go you want to surrender wrist rock surrender mr rocket life is good we love yeah, it. and he's like, and look what happened to Commander Shark. It <laughs> exactly. all went downhill. Very quickly. Here, but don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, though. We're still only maybe halfway through. <laughs> yeah, we're only part two. <laughs> yes. So, yes, continuing in act two. The gang, they decide to stop the piranha before he carries out his plot to take over the world. And again, through Sally, Shelly's suggestion, mm -hmm. Bubbles and Biff, they are told to go get into the rocket and sabotage it by any means. The rocket okay. carrying the weapon of mass destruction, rocket Great. that one, while Shelly, Clamhead, and Jabberjaw, they are going to go to the Piranha's command control center and just like fuck shit up enough in there to delay okay. the launch. Yeah, that's Great. literally, they didn't say fuck shit up, but like that's the R rated that's version vibe. of exactly what they said. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So Shelly's group, they all dress up, the three of them, they dress up as janitors and they kind of just clean their way right on up to the Piranha's launch control room. Okay. And in there, they quite literally start fucking shit up, just like pool thing. And Every no one's in there? They can... No, no one's in there. Uh, I'm trying to think. No, no, no. No one's in there yet. So they go in there and it's empty okay. and they start like pushing buttons. Actually, no, no, no. You're right. Okay. I'm glad you said this. When they go up there, Gregor is outside of it. And he's like, what are you guys doing going in that room? And they're like, oh, no, no, we're cleaning the piranha's orders. And he's like, okay, fine. Go in and like, yeah. be quick about it. And then he leaves. So then, yes, no one is okay. in there. But he he Great. does. He look at looks at him kind of sus. Like, I don't he remember says, hiring no cleaners. I, I don't remember hiring no here. shark to no, clean. <laughs> We're a no fun. shark kind of place. Don't let the piranha see you. He gets yeah. triggered by sharks. Make it quick. Exactly. <laughs> he had a bad experience one time. Make it quick. <laughs> so, yes, while they're in there fucking shit up, pressing all sorts of buttons, mm -hmm. Biff and Bubbles <clears throat> are in the rocket searching for a way to likewise fuck shit up in there. And Great. so Bubbles, Thanks. bless her soul, <laughs> actually. Fucks it up. I mean, she fucks it up in the best possible way. She offers up a suggestion. She says, okay. maybe we should depressurize the main liquid oxygen terminals, activate the secondary fuel fail-safe fuel surface, and zip the backup system. What? And Biff literally says that. Biff is absolutely stunned and floored that Bubbles, of all people, would come up with something that sounds like an actual intelligent and cogent plan. And he's like, what makes you think we should do that? And Bubbles, in an absolutely rare, damn near extinct moment of genius, says, <laughs> that big sign over there that says not to do it. And the camera <laughs> okay. pans over and you see a warning sign that says, do not. And it like, lists <laughs> do all this all stuff these out. Steps. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> I'm like, damn, Bubbles, low key genius. Again, the writers, this was an act of desperation. They're like, episode 15, look, we got to give her pro- something. The producers are telling us that Bubbles ain't it. All right. We got to make her look smart. We got to do something for like maybe, a just second. Maybe. But they couldn't do a full rewrite of making her actually like a <laughs> literal rocket scientist. They were like, we, we'll make her literate. Exactly. She can read a sign. <laughs> That's it. that's all we can do for her (laughs) yes this works and you know what good for her actually because up until this point i questioned her ability yeah yeah you know you're right this wasn't right for her yeah so yes biff and bubbles they start to kick their plan into gear and of course as the plan requires shit gets fucked up in there Mm -hmm. and they book it on out Shelly, Jabber, and Clam, meanwhile, they're still fucking up shit in the launch control room, and they accidentally, in the midst of all of that, launch the weapon of mass destruction. You know, when you're just hitting buttons willy-nilly, it might happen. One of them. And when you hit buttons willy-nilly in a room called the launch control room room. (laughs) that controls a rocket that is also a weapon of mass destruction, randomly pushing buttons in that launch control room (laughs) may unfortunately launch Launch. the rocket, (laughs) which they do. Yeah. So rather than pressing other buttons to try to stop this rocket, they instead just say, (laughs) Oops, let's get out of here. I biff and bubbles, I guess. <laughs> so Shelly's whole plan to stop the rocket from going off actually ends in the rocket going off. Launched but... it sooner. <laughs> yes. But the piranha sees them before they leave at this point. He's like, what idiot launched the rocket? I said 20 I said 20 minutes, minutes. not now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But he sees them booking it out of the launch control Mm -hmm. room before they can get too far. And so he sounds the alarm, sending the Neptunes, all of them, into high alert and alerting them to get the fuck out of there and make their way to Amster Aqua. Okay. And just to quickly state how ridiculous, sorry, like when you watch this episode, they like literally cram into this tiny little ship that I assume they're stealing from the piranha. Uh jabber is squished in as always he just looks so funny like his whole face just like it's just like smushed down. which like again so, like, jabber all his facial features are just like, <laughs> yeah, like but never down. does in the aqua cars no no he like, always just stays the same size and he's like yeah. towering over this thing before he gets in but it's just the way that the animators decided to like smush him. visually smush him is amazing also it's our a decision and bubbles they made in the car yeah yeah they're all in there so when the alarm went off they jumped out of the over. ship <laughs> or the rocket jumped out of the rocket yeah okay, yeah no, i don't know they somehow ran out in time okay. and everyone convenes back at the the stolen car yes exactly okay. so they book it all out of there and the piranha he sees them leave and escape and he says that the rocket needs to be immediately located and the the saboteurs again He's very abstract fun. he is he and he likes this word he uses saboteurs at least like two or three times during this episode i love him i do He's I'm so not dramatic, mad at him yet. but not too dramatic with the case yeah yeah it's not <laughs> obnoxiously dramatic exactly but he says that they must immediately be found and captured so that he can torture them essentially act yeah. three or part three <laughs> locating the piranha's weapons of mass destruction <laughs> follow the giant fucking rocket in the sky Got yes it. oh there it is drive faster we're, on, we're going after it yeah so the gang no yeah they've kind of like just given up they're like all right well glad that we got out of that situation and that yeah. like the piranha doesn't have you know the the rocket anymore like let's not follow it though let's just go let's go to amster aqua and go to the police station wipe our there. hands clean <laughs> we gotta get literally gig. literally they go there i think it's jabber's idea he's like we gotta go to the police station and they immediately tell the lead inspector someone named inspector van uten all about the piranhas attack and the inspector is very, very much unpleased with Jabberjaw's very animated, we'll say, reenactment ah, of the attack. Jabberjaw of is like, 
picking up the Brush inspector, <laughs> like assaulting a police planning, officer, assaulting got it? a police officer, literally like knocking shit off of his desk, <laughs> flailing everywhere, mm-hmm. making a mess. And at one point when Jabber stops telling the story, he looks around like, wait, where did the inspector go? <laughs> and Biff is like, he's on the ceiling. And they look up and he's like holding on to a chandelier up on the ceiling, like, <laughs> oh my God, hurt me. That's... calling for backup literally he calls his security robots into his office and they immediately throw <laughs> Jabberjaw and the neptunes onto yeah. the street out of the police station These crazy and... people who bust in here telling this wild yeah. story about a piranha <laughs> about a piranha man who ate an oil tanker <laughs> yeah and who are like and a piranha man who's dancing yeah <laughs> He's what? And there's some guy named Gregor? Like, who? who? What? What are you guys George talking Michael? about? George Michael? I guess I George Michael. Michael. Yeah, sure. I like, the, I like the jitterbug. Yes, what yeah. about it? <laughs> Get him out Someone of here. put a boom boom into your heart? <laughs> you said your soul was on fire when the loving starts? that seems fine what's the problem get out of my office what's going on please security (laughs) robots get them so the gang they then they leave there and they're like okay well i guess let's check into our hotel they didn't believe us so man we still have a gig and also like this whole time there's just some weapon of mass destruction is flying through the sky flying through the sky or like randomly landed in some random farm town and who knows we don't where know. exactly okay. we don't know we will cool. find out very soon but like until in, up until this point yeah they're just like okay well we got this show we, so like and we did what we could be damned and we told some authority <laughs> and our, again leave us what more can we do yeah nothing yeah that's it so Yep, they check into their hotel, and hilariously, Clamhead's pretty rude about it when they get there. He's tired. Like, he needs to sit down. He was, because all he, he wanted was Hawaii. Yes, he's he's still pissed that they're in Amster Aqua. This isn't Shaggy. He doesn't care that it's Amsterdam, okay? Yeah. This is Clamhead. He wants to be on the beach. He yes. doesn't care about weed and dispensaries and all of that <laughs> shit. He's like, I wanted to go to Hawaii and I don't get it. So he gets to the front desk at the hotel and he's like, hi, we're the Neptunes. Is our room ready? (laughs) Quote, unquote, is what he says. He knows they have two more gigs on this goddamn (laughs) tour and then he never has to look at a single one of these people again. (laughs) He's like, if we had gone to Hawaii, we wouldn't have been kidnapped. Truly, truly. Um, and he's like, if we had gone to Hawaii, I wouldn't have wake me up before you go go stuck in my head stuck right in my now. Goddamn head. Yes. I'd be That's listening to Jimmy Buffett. Yes. On the fucking want beach. A margarita. Damn it. <laughs> I'd be in Margaritaville right now. Yes. So <laughs> So before they get checked in, because the lobby, the receptionist is probably like, fucking rude. rude. Okay, let me take my time finding your reservations. <laughs> Biff is like, wait, hold on, guys. Look at this article in the newspaper. And he opens it up and he reads that there is a man. This is like actually like front page news. It's big news here. There's a man who claimed to see a huge UFO, a.k.a. a giant rocket, <laughs> land in a nearby seaweed forest the night before. And the man, <laughs> Mr. Fred Kelpington, <laughs> LOL, is an amateur <laughs> seaweed collector and fish watcher who claims that he saw this UFO land and that it had a piranha shaped insignia on it. Which wow. hilarious! Okay. The piranha like leaves the calling card. He like puts his brand on everything. He's got to let him know on everything. Imagine putting your logo on a secret weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> it's like slap the United States flag on that boy, so we know exactly I mean, who to trace it back to. Exactly. How are they going to know who to surrender to? This is true. If Actually, it's blank, right. anyone can come in and say it was them. Exactly. It's got to be. Yeah. It's got to have a calling card attached to it so we know who's in charge. These Again. piranhas, no PR. We've established that. <laughs> just going to say, just, just like I said before, these piranhas, man, they know how to send a good message to the public. <laughs> exactly. They know Pri- how to get it out. Piranha PR know. is peak. They got piranha it. Piranha PR. <laughs> So, yes, they continue to read this article and they realize that the authorities 
They didn't believe Kelpington, who is known in the area as an eccentric character who lives on kelp berries and inhabits an abandoned water mill on the edge of town, which is it really abandoned if he lives there? I argue, yeah, I questions. don't know, but he still does sound eccentric, eccentric nonetheless. Okay. So the gang decides to rent an aqua tow truck, aka a tow truck, a tow truck underwater, and right. they drive it out to the old water mill to ask uh, Mr. Kelpington where exactly he saw this UFO land. And meanwhile, we see that the piranha is also getting in his daily reading of the newspaper. And he comes <laughs> across, it is cute. He's like in his little HQ flipping through. And then he comes across the very same article about Mr. Kelpington. And he orders his crew to track down this dude, find him. And then that way they will also be able to find his rocket. Mm, great. Part four, Mr. Kelpington's abandoned windmill. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to call it abandoned, but I was like, fuck it. But the title is better. Exactly. The journalist who wrote the article about it was correct. It gives it gravitas. (laughs) It does. It gives it ambiance. Ambiance. It makes it more, it makes it less abstract, actually. (laughs) Exactly. Also, I like that the Neptunes could have Mm -hmm. stayed out of it. Like Clamhead was probably like, we wiped our hands clean Mm -hmm. of this. We're going back for more. Yeah, right. He's like, damn it, this is not Hawaii. You guys, no one listens to me. (laughs) No one listens to me. Yeah, I mean, you know, I maybe have some like larger speculation about the Neptunes, um, which maybe Mm -hmm. we can talk about next week at the end of your, or uh, in a couple weeks at the end of my last episode, I mean, like put a bow on it. But I'm starting to think like they have no issue shying away from just these mass acts of terrorism and like saving yeah. the day and whatnot. Like, I think we've mainly established that they're all criminals. They are all criminals slash are they actually like, I think they're a crime fighting gang first moonlighting as a band. But again, we'll t- we'll yeah. talk about that. Agreed. At the end of the last episode, that'll and be, we'll wrap I would a bow on say, it with some wild spec. Yeah. I'm like not even crime fighting. I think they're a they're all criminals. They're criminals, right? Band. Yeah, it's and almost they accidentally it's like, um, solve the crimes when they're trying to actually take the weapons. It's like uh, to obsess over James Gunn for another week here. Kind of, <laughs> it's like the Suicide Squad, quite frankly, yeah. for folks who are fans of like comic books and comic book movies, where right, all, all criminals of these, come together, all criminals and like villains coming together to create a super group of like people who actually stop crime or like stop super villain plots because like hey yeah. who knows how to stop a criminal better than a criminal boom right exactly oh, yes. but they have to moonlight as a band so that it like yes. gives them access to all these other places exactly exactly so yes the abandoned windmill <laughs> they <laughs> arrive at <laughs> part four thank you very part much. four sorry part four we've only got one more part to go i've lost track this. yes so the gang they arrive at mr kelpington's windmill first before the piranha gets there and they immediately swim up to his door and this dude kind of sadly he's longing for some company oh. and for someone to finally see him as normal not as this eccentric old man who lives alone and just eats kelp berries by himself in the abandoned windmill Mm -hmm. so fred fred kelpington he lets them in and he happily tells them all about the ufo he saw landing Mm -hmm. and he starts by telling them from the beginning of the story how he was you know just out on a normal night watching fish when it happened specifically the silver-breasted stickleback it flew right, it swam right past me. No uh-huh. kids ever seen a silver-breasted stickleback before? They're beautiful. Honestly, <laughs> I can't even judge him because this is just us birding. It literally is. This is us Yeah, I'm watching. like, I love him. I, I do love him. I was like, oh my God, wait, I want to know about this stickleback. Yeah, wait, back up. Please, sir, tell me. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, we'll talk about that WMD later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know it's not UFO. The we know back. it's UFO. <laughs> exactly. But like they say WMD and then Fred's like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> a what i thought it was a ufo are we nope, nothing yes ufo no, ufo oh yep, yep ufo that thing but shelly this mean very rude alien lady she very rudely cuts off fred like yeah yeah, yeah. that's enough about the sticklebacks tell rude. us about the ufo so freaking rude so rude but 
Again, at the same time, yeah, they kind of are on a time crunch here. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, ask, <laughs> they ask him yeah. to get to the point. Time's running out. And she does have a planet to conquer that the piranha is getting in her way of. So, right. And or she could use this rocket herself. Well, exactly. She's like, wait a minute. I could send this. This is good recon, actually, that I could yeah, send I back could to my alien race. Make this. <laughs> exactly. And so Fred says that suddenly, you know, in the middle of him watching the stickleback, the ground was covered in shadow and overhead, a huge shiny UFO landed right in front of him. And then he then just, he tells the kids that he'll then draw them a map of where to find the location so that they can just leave and go there themselves. Mm. And just as Fred is walking through this makeshift map that he's drawn together, the gang looks out of a nearby window and they see the piranha's ship approaching the windmill. And Fred then tells them to quickly get up to the attic to hide. And Jabber, as mm. he's running up there, he then like last minute grabs Fred and brings him up into the attic with them. Okay. And so in a last minute effort, Jabber comes up with the plan. Okay, great. <laughs> a plan so genius. Okay. Only the greatest secret agents. This is Jason Bourne level <laughs> stuff. Okay. Only the greatest Something secret agents. Something stirring agent in him again. <laughs> exactly. When he's in a corner, when the pressure is high, just like the piranhas. Back against the wall. That's when he acts. <laughs> the water level is getting low. Anxiety is raising. Food rising. scarcity. Yes. The trigger happens. <laughs> he decides. To switch Fred's clothes onto Shelly. <laughs> and Fred and is just left in like his so, yeah. long, exactly. And Fred's so just like in his long johns. <laughs> so then they like throw Fred into a closet. Shelly is now wearing this like long trench coat and this like light housekeeper's hat type <laughs> style thing. Uh-huh. She still has her hair down and everything. They're like, it's clearly Shelly just wearing this guy's clothes. In this way, the idea is that the piranha and his henchmen are going to think that Shelly is Fred. Great. Great. So when the henchmen come running up into the attic looking for Fred, Jabber, he plays the part. He's like holding Shelly in Fred's clothing. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. You're not going to get him. And he literally yeets Shelly. That's why he chose Shelly. Exactly. He's like, oh yeah, I can throw her. I don't want to throw this old <laughs> man. He's, he's chill, but I don't give a fuck about Shelly. I throw her all the time. Yeah, but exactly. he throws her and Biff actually catches her. Like, oh. Yeah. Like per- perfectly catches her in his arms and then runs oh, wow. out of the windmill. And so this way though, it, like again, they're playing into it. The henchmen mm-hmm. are like, oh, that must be Fred. They're throwing him to get away from us. Blah, 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 whatever. And so- the Neptunes and Jabberjaw, they climb out onto the roof of this windmill and they put on their aqua helmets and gear and they decide to uh-huh. like jump off the top of the windmill and swim back to their tow truck to yeah. get out of there. And sorry, the yeah. everyone needs Fred to sh- because Fred is the one who knows where this is. Exactly. He knows okay. where it is. But there's remember, no GPS device on this. There's no in the year 2076. No, okay. there is not. Okay. I just got that. That's that's why they needed 20 more minutes, <laughs> Grace. That it. was the last they thing. They had to put the like, Apple tag it. on it. <laughs> exactly, the air tag. They needed to air tag it. Um, the piranha okay. was like going through all of his drawers and stuff in his <laughs> yeah. office looking for all it. Like, I just, give me 20 shit. more minutes. We'll be ready in 20 minutes, I promise. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Gregor's like panicking, trying to like get I'm, everyone to calm down. I'm yeah. imagining that the junk drawer that the piranha has for some reason has a lot of glitter in it. <laughs> He's having a lot of fun all the time. You know? There's, like, fun sunglasses and stuff (laughs) in there. The little, like, kazoos, the party kazoos. (laughs) Yeah, just fun stuff all the time. Tossing all of this stuff behind him, looking for the air tag. It's like a a pile of, like, party favors. Just, like, (laughs) glitter. Like, I don't know, colored pencils and crayons and There's shit. like, you know, little like happy birthday, like banners. Yeah. Like a, Yesterday a, was Gregor's of, birthday. Yeah, a couple of disco balls, like little mini ones, fun swirly straws. He gets distracted. He opens up a card. It starts playing Wake Me Up Before You Go Go. <laughs> and in the background, Gregor's like, hurry up. <laughs> I can't help but do the snap. 
everyone's getting distracted they pause for a dance break and he's like okay put 20 more quick minutes on the clock (laughs) and then that's when he makes his announcement (laughs) our path to victory is near (laughs) you see the neptunes like fucking shit up pressing buttons and stuff (laughs) while everyone else is like dancing (laughs) with me go go (laughs) meanwhile uh, the piranha throws a yo-yo out of (laughs) Don't leave me hanging on like a yo yo. Do like a whole choreography. With Do this like all, it's like the light up yo yos too. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I want to work for the piranha. This this God, sounds like I a know. very happy, healthy work environment. I know. I, I bet they do. Here. I bet they do four day work weeks, four tens, you know. I mean, if yeah. even, probably four eights. Why yeah, does it need to right, be a 40 why? hour work week? <laughs> exactly. The extra two hours are for dancing. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot breaks. of dance rehearsal though mandatory dance breaks <laughs> uh, honestly i'm a little sad that fred kelpington isn't going to join them because like yeah, he doesn't know what he's missing out on yeah i think he could be happy with the piranha <laughs> he could he would like them he's a lonely yeah. dude all he wants is someone to dance to wham with you know exactly. isn't that what we all want in he life? could use some glitter in his life <laughs> yes and start playing Mariah Carey glitter. <laughs> this is the other most relatable character in the whole show so far. Fred. Gregor and Fred Kelpington, whatever yes. his last name was. Kelpington. Yeah. yeah. So um, anyway. So they uh after Jabber yeets Shelly over to Biff, they oh, yeah. all run out. They climb up onto the roof of this windmill. They put on their aqua helmets and their gear. And they swim off of the top of the windmill so that they can go like follow the map to the the rocket, the map that uh, Fred drew out for them. Mm. But on their way down from the top of the windmill, Jabber kind of gets like caught on one of the bars or like the arms or whatever of the the turbine. I don't oh, know. Yeah. And he like he gets caught on it and he like pulls it down and since he's so big and heavy it like causes the windmill to like viciously spin while the entire gang is still on it and it just like forces them to like projectile like fly off like shoot off of the windmill kind of helpful in a way it is i was like oh good like good it's sending them out of here but they actually land directly in front of the piranha ship (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay so they let go of the projectile at the wrong time yes exactly like if they had waited one like i don't know physics that well but i'm sure if they had waited one millisecond or like if they had they done could have a gone millisecond the earlier forest. it would have landed them exactly in the right place <laughs> yeah but they let go just slightly too early the trajectory okay. was off yes yeah you hate so, to see it happen you do you hate to see it because yeah now that they have landed directly in front of the ship the piranha captures them he's literally like <laughs> this guy has a very dramatic voice by the way too he's like Haha, welcome back <laughs> i imagine and then welcome them back prisoners. Yeah. Yeah. Litter. Yeah. Kazoo. <laughs> yeah. blows the glitter in their faces <laughs> welcome back <laughs> jitterbug <laughs> god he is so fabulous all I love of his the are like dancing behind <laughs> the prisoners are still there they've had a chance to escape but they're not they're, they're like not. this absolutely beats being an oil tanker crewman 100 percent. they like put on their because i forgot to mention that obviously all of the henchmen are wearing uniforms too yeah they've got on like you know the green body suits with like the red vest type thing with the piranha logo on it uh-huh all of the oil tankers are like fully wearing that now but like <laughs> exactly. they still have their oil tanker hats on so we can still distinguish who is who uh-huh. but they're like oh yeah we're in it now like we, yeah. we love this, this yeah we're actually gonna say that the ship did burst into flames and that we all died on this ship yeah. no one can find us our employer cannot find us again this is they our new life neither prove nor deny exactly i have a family at home i'm never gonna see them again this is, this is way my more family fun now yeah. Yeah, my family <laughs> never dances it's lame <laughs> Yeah, they are so boring. (laughs) So this brings us now to our final part, part (laughs) five, a.k.a. the end of act three. The Piranha's prisoners foil the Piranha's plot. Ooh, what an alliteration. I think you're inspired this episode by the Piranha to be just like more fabulous than usual. (laughs) 
I know? am, you know, and I feel like I had a great week this week too. It was like, I can do anything, you know, the piranha could do it. I can too. I can do it. I can too. We all need to be a little bit more like the piranha in our day to day lives, you know, Love leave, it. leave that old abusive, either <laughs> job or relationship or friendship, whatever. Who's behind. not letting you be yourself. Exactly. Embrace your full self, be the piranha, take over the world, create a weapon of mass destruction if you want. <laughs> Let people know how dangerous you are if you wanted to be. If you want to be, right? Like I could press this button if I wanted to. Yeah. Will I could you make eat me you press alive. It? I could dance and listen to Wham all day. <laughs> or I could kill every single one of you. You could do this. What's it going to be? You could do that. What's it going to be? What's your choice today? Yeah, we love living on the edge. We do. just like actual piranha do and the piranha and the does. the piranha does daily. He's an inspiration. So, He's he going is. on my I'm mood board. <laughs> 2024 vision board. Yeah. The piranha's right at the middle of it. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice. So yes, inside of the ship of his massive monster ship, the piranha immediately interrogates Mr. Kelpington. I guess they took him out of the windmill too. And they ask him where the rocket is. But, <laughs> wait, no, that's right. I got this mixed up. Oh no. Uh, but when he pulls the hat off of Mr. Kelpington's head, he's like, you're not Mr. Kelpington. It's Shelly. I forgot <laughs> that it was still her in costume. So it actually worked. It worked on me too. <laughs> You had some glitter in your eyes and you couldn't Sorry, see I the truth. I couldn't see. And yes, <laughs> so he's shocked to see. And it's actually the best reveal when he rips the hat off because Shelly's like smugly grinning at him like, gotcha, motherfucker. She fucking loves yeah. it. Yeah. She's like, she's like oh yeah. That weapon of mass destruction's mine, bitch. <laughs> now. Bet you didn't expect to see this. <laughs> Yeah, so Shelly's the one never ripping seen it, it off. Before. Yeah. Right. He's like, I don't know you. He's like, who are you? I just yeah. know that you're not Fred Kelpington. Who are you? Right. Are you his daughter? <laughs> okay, Did so you you're still prisoner. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just as the piranha realizes that he's been tricked, Bubbles then blurts out that not only will they never tell him where the rocket is. They also won't let him see their nice map that Mr. Kelpington drew for them. So the piranha then immediately says, oh, there's a map? <laughs> Search them and find the map. But Great. with quick thinking and previous experience, Jabber then decides to immediately eat the map, <laughs> a.k.a. putting it in a place where no one will be able to get Finally, it. Finally, yes, doing exactly, shark shit. <laughs> exactly, doing shark shit and this time doing it properly. So yep. the piranha's then like, all right, well, you're going to regret that you did that. And in my mind at first, I'm like, oh, shit, the piranha's not fucking around. He's about to cut Jabber's stomach open and get that mat. Yeah, it's no longer but fine. <laughs> I don't like this anymore. He but tipped no. over from that that edge we were just talking about. Exactly. One day, I could listen to Wham or destroy the world. Today, he's, he's destroying the world. He's choosing evil now. Exactly. But he doesn't quite take it that far. Instead, he okay. does take Jabber to this like different lab slash operating room where Jabber mm -hmm. is like stretched out and strapped down to a table with a bunch of x-ray devices hanging over top oh, of okay. him. Yeah, so it's a little bit more friendly. And the piranha, so he presses a button on his control board and he activates one of these x-ray machines. And then you can like see the map fully within Jabber's belly. That's smart. Okay. It is smart. And you know what? We're not going to question the technology of the year 2076, but <laughs> yes, it is smart. So Great. he then orders, uh, the piranha then orders his henchmen to throw the prisoners into what he calls the piranha cell, which is right. essentially an 1800 era like submersible vessel <laughs> like, oh. it looks like it was like created during like the civil war or like right after the revolution oh yeah, yeah the old war. school submarines yeah, like, the circular type things yes yeah. that are fucking terrifying absolutely terrifying so he puts all of them in that and then puts that whole submersible in another tank of water that's filled with hungry piranha swimming circles around the vessel okay He's no longer so, fucking around. He's not fucking around anymore. He's okay. like, he's pissed. He's mad. Okay. He's been backed into a corner. 
the water level is low. <laughs> there's overcrowding. He, just there's little, like his namesake. Heads. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And job. He's getting violent. He's getting yep. violent. So at this point, when they're stuck in this piranha cell, Jabber, he comes up with another idea to get all of them out of there. Essentially, look, he's ooze. He can shapeshift. He yeah. turns himself into a jackhammer, essentially, and busts through the bottom of like the sub, the vessel, and then through the bottom of the tank as well. Okay. Which then gives them a clear path to freedom, absent any piranha attacks. Also, like they a make piranha is not going to attack a great white shark. So, yeah, like, no, he is the apex predator in this situation, <laughs> yeah. without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, he was fine the whole time. Yeah, there was never any need for concern, like yeah. whatever. So then <laughs> the gang, they run out of there, they get back to their tow truck and they head out to find the rocket before the piranha can get to it. Because I think they've like memorized the map or something. Okay. But the evil mastermind, the piranha, he's already there leaving the seaweed field or the kelp field, whatever, with the rocket in tow. And so at this point, though, the piranha, he sees the Neptunes approaching them and he's shocked. And honestly, at this point, probably getting a little terrified that yep. the gang was able to escape his piranha cell, which yep. we just described. Like, he obviously didn't really think that through anyways. But nonetheless, he's like, oh, my God, shit, these kids are serious. Yeah, I wonder and if in this moment, too, he's like, is Jabberjaw one of the creations of my old boss? <laughs> my old boss? <laughs> How did the sharks... He's human he thing no you're yeah, get out yeah what's going on this oh, oh god. god it's all coming back to me oh we god can't jitterbug our way out of this Tur turn down wham this is serious <laughs> business now Tur turn and up celine dion's it's all coming back to me now it's all coming back to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also funny when you think about what that song is really bad about <laughs> yeah, exactly. when you touch me like that <laughs> were him and Jabber secret lovers I yeah when Jabber Jabber was a human yeah <laughs> oh gosh and so there's a lot of chaos going on in this ship now right like the piranha yep. he's scared he knows that these kids are about to foil his plot they weren't supposed to escape from his cell especially mm -hmm. not that quickly the henchmen are freaking out and one of them accidentally instead of like kicking the ship into high gear he accidentally releases the rocket from the tow line that is attached to the piranha oh, ship. Yeah. So the rocket then drops down to the sea floor and is now up for grabs by either the Neptunes or the piranha, whoever can dive down to it first. This is what so, happens when you spend too much time on dance classes and not <laughs> evil villain classes. The piranha said, turn off that music. And the person didn't know which button to press because they never have to turn off the music. Yeah. So he accidentally pressed the button to unleash the uh -huh. tow line. He's like, turn off the music. What do I do? Oh, oh no. God. Oh, God. God the day the music it. died. Oh, no. <laughs> if this if this show ever gets rebooted and they do it this episode has to be a musical episode i would just <laughs> yeah. say but it's going to be like all of these music popular episode songs. you'll accept <laughs> oh, absolutely <laughs> but it'll it'll be like weird owl versions of all of these popular songs that we've like <laughs> name dropped so <laughs> like rewritten for jabberjaw like wake me up before you go go rewritten for jabberjaw but like my heart will go on or no what, what were we saying it's uh, all coming it's back, all coming to, me back to me yeah i'm sorry yeah uh, so like yes th 100%. this is acceptable Correct. anyways so the piranha he orders his crew to chase down the neptunes and to get rid of them before they reach the rocket and the seaweed forest in this chase, it goes on for a while, and eventually the Neptunes just end up driving their tow truck back into the Piranha's monster ship. Of course. So, like, I guess if you want to hide from someone, like, you go inside of it, I guess, or go inside okay. the thing. It's the best way to avoid capture is by, I don't Capturing know, yourself. Capturing yourself. So the gang, they're now inside of the ship and they're actually outrunning henchmen and guards who are trying to chase them down. And mm -hmm. they're outwitting them. They're actually trapping the henchmen, playing their own game, beating them at their own game. And eventually they make their way to the cockpit where the piranha is like in real time steering the ship. Oh God, okay. 
<laughs> and so once they get in there, the piranha is like, holy shit, they made it past all my guards, all of my henchmen. They've infiltrated my ship. He gets up and he's like, these, these superhero spies are ruthless. He books it out of there, Grace. He's trying to escape. So he like jumps into an escape pod. Oh my gosh. And just like flees. And he's trying to get away from the Neptunes uh-huh. and avoid capture at this point in a yeah. hefty prison sentence for piracy and international terrorism. For sure. So Shelly at this point, now that the helm is free, she just like takes control like, of the steering. I'm the she's captain like, now. I'm g- <laughs> she's like, I've done this before. I know all about massive ships. I've got this. <gasps> And they start chasing down the piranha in his oh, escape gosh. pod from his massive ship. And they essentially <clears throat> just swallow him back up. You know, the chase okay. goes on for a few minutes, but they swallow the piranha into his own ship. And as soon as he's in there, they tie down his escape pod and like keep it shut so that he can't go anywhere until the crew can fly them back to Amster Aqua and let mm. the police deal with them. And that's pretty much how, that's how they defeat the piranha, you know? So they get to Amstraqua, he's taken into custody, and Inspector Van Uten thanks the Neptunes for doing his job for him, pretty much. (laughs) He's like, oh, so this was real? (laughs) This was real. He's like, oh my God, I can't thank you guys enough. I literally did not have to lift a finger (laughs) in solving this international crisis, so thank you. Um, And yeah, once he makes no mention of any sort of pay or anything like that for saving the day, Biff is like, well, guys, I guess we're out of here. We got to get pay. Yeah, we can't lose this money on the game. We just lost this reward money. Like like the inspector thanks them and they just kind of stand there for a second looking at him like. uh, And he was like, we didn't even know there was a crime. We just thought it was (laughs) Kelpington being weird. Yeah, exactly. So there's no reward. Bye. Thanks. And Biff's like, oh. Okay, guys, well, let's go. Let's get out of here. Let's go get paid for this other gig. Like, damn, Biff really actually didn't even want to perform. He was really hoping they would get paid for this. They're yeah. like, well, damn, we got bills to pay. So, like, bye, Inspector. Yeah, see ya. But hilariously, and this is the last line and the last scene slash shot of the episode, mm-hmm. this gig is very interesting because they're playing this song that sounds like it could be, like, Chicago or something like that. It's actually one of the songs that was in my earlier episodes that's, like, so good and a very yeah. just like funky song like it's yeah it's, it's like such early a vibe. 70s yeah. yeah but like the camera pans out to the crowd and it's a bunch of like later hosen wearing like because oh, they're in Amsterdam <laughs> yeah like or like Dutch looking country folk like all wearing like the green like overall things and uh-huh. like the clogging shoes <laughs> just like politely sitting in this domed arena oh my God, they like, hate the music. gently they're like gently smiling and like tapping along but like the Chicago type song is playing I mean they all applaud and stuff at the end though and like yes, polite. that is the end exactly <laughs> <They're> <laughs> polite and that is the end wow (laughs) that was incredible that was it was something i cannot wait to watch this um i'm really hoping that in reality the inspector like the second that they all leave just like looks towards like kelpington and is like or not kelpington um the piranha yeah because Here's the thing. The Neptunes already went in there spewing this crazy story and then Mm -hmm. randomly arrive with like a roughed up looking man and then just drop him off and leave. I hope the inspector is like, sir, are you okay? Like, (laughs) we've dealt with these people before. I'm sorry if they've like assaulted you. You're free to go because they didn't bring any evidence in such as a ship, a weapon of mass destruction. They just brought in a single man as in a in his like up. car yeah yeah so i'm hoping <laughs> like not a crime to wear a costume you know just yeah. because this guy has on a mask and a cape doesn't make him a super villain it, you need Being something fabulous more is not a crime <laughs> so i hope the inspector let him go lets him go yeah because again at this point they didn't bring any evidence in, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. so i think i just i really like the the piranha that i hope He's let back out into the streets. I'm okay with his weapon of mass destruction. And you know what? I actually, it just struck me. Uh Uh-huh. Well, no. Okay, shit. That's right. There was piracy and theft when he stole the oil tanker. But who reported it? Exactly. For all I know, it exploded. 
it, yeah, is that oil, is that company that, you know, has the tanker? Are they pressing charges? Like, I don't know. Is but do they know who to press charges here's against? The thing. <laughs> here's the thing. I'm not sure. Other than that, the piranha actually did nothing wrong in this episode. <laughs> it was international he, waters. He did the same thing that every Boeing, Northrop Gumman, <laughs> Halliburton, even <laughs> Microsoft in some ways, they all make weapons of mass destruction every single day. And I don't see any of them being arrested for it. But yeah, the whole, the piracy thing is unfortunately but again, not helping his case, uh, the Piranha's case. But other than that, like- But here's the you thing, know, he, is he the company pressing intent, charges? But did he, exactly, are they, are they? I don't know, I don't think so. They haven't said it. Accidents happen. Is, they do. This is insurance. Insurance will cover this. Like, in fact, the company is probably happy because insurance is going to like triple the value of the payload. Yeah. Yeah. And again, there are no uh, crewmen going back to say what happened. No, they're They're just gone saying. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. And they're loving life. They're living their best lives right now. So I don't know. I think he's good now. He created. He created a, we- a weapon of mass destruction, but he he maybe had the intent to use it, but like he didn't fully start carrying out his plan. He said he needed 20 more minutes. We'll never know what would have happened in those 20 minutes. In my opinion, yeah. the Neptunes did a lot more danger here to society. They actually did launch the rocket. Exactly. You, before it was ready to be launched. Like, yeah, it could have been way worse here. Yeah. With the Neptunes at the helm. So, you know so. what? I'm thinking he's getting away scot free. I'm thinking, and I love that for him. Me too. The piranha is my new inspo, style (laughs) wise, lifestyle wise. I wonder priority wise. I know, like all of it. He's he is the moment. This is (laughs) (laughs) this is our piranha moment. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Embracing it, our piranha era. Yeah, piranha. We're entering our piranha era. (laughs) Piranha mode. Get ready, ready for, for it. Us. Get ready for it, listeners and viewers. There's going to be a lot more piranha talk on this podcast. Going There's going to be a lot more glitter. A lot, a more, lot glitter. more piranha talk. A lot more wham. <laughs> exactly. A lot more George Michaels. Yeah. I'm As there always it. should be in our lives. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, also, so, most of the time during this episode, I was <laughs> TBH picturing the piranha also as David Bowie. <laughs> Just like for your own knowledge of how I was for going through this episode. Thank you. Yeah, you like Ziggy what? Stardust in, style. In a live casting in another world or in a world where we could bring him back. Yeah, I would say he would be perfect for that. No, yeah, he would it. be because he, he's perfect for everything. So yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. exactly. <laughs> wow. Well, incredible work. I'm Thank you. so excited to watch this episode. It's great. It's great. I will say that for my last two episodes, I actually changed the episode that I'm doing uh, My for my next episode is going to uh-huh. be different from what I originally put down on the uh tracker so uh-huh. I was choosing between three episodes for my last two and I watched the three of them because I knew you weren't doing the other one uh-huh. and I was like the piranha plot episode stays this is for <laughs> sure it's now a staple <laughs> this is so yes I, because I was very again I got very happy watching it because yes his, his happiness is contagious the piranha's yeah. happiness is very contagious so that's what the piranha era is all Glad about you enjoyed it yes exactly we are entering our piranha era and I cannot yes. wait we're gonna it's just start glittery. glowing it's glittery <laughs> yeah. it's glowing we're new we're, women we're glowing because all the glitter highlighting exactly. her. we went to limited too we went to Claire's we got <laughs> yeah, we the did roll on glitter Right. It's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But yes, I can't wait until next week when you keep us going with your last episode of Jabber Jaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it's yes, keeping us a go go. <laughs> You're not going to leave us hanging on like a yo yo. I would never. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh-huh. But until then, Grace, who should they tell about this podcast? You know, I think in the spirit of a classic gasoline fight, you should tell Ben Stiller. Nice. <laughs> uh, from Dear Zoolander. Um, yeah. Somehow. I don't know if he has social media. He seems like someone who doesn't. So write him a letter. Yeah, true. <laughs> Snail mail it. I don't know. Find a way <laughs> like to get to him. Yeah. yeah. Let yeah. Ben Stiller know uh, yeah. about the show. And yeah. who else should they tell? Well, 
uh, I guess after that, you should tell Owen Will Owen Wilson. Yeah, uh-huh. Owen Wilson. Yeah, yes. I was gonna say Wham, but I don't think George Michael's is dead, and I don't remember yeah, who the is. other guy in Wham is. So. Yeah, that's and why sure I was originally gonna say yeah. it too, and then I was like, Yeah, uh, you know what? You still could uh, you see, yeah. get that Ouija get board that out. Ouija- Go back and listen to a couple of our episodes about how to do a proper seance. <laughs> yep, exactly. As some totally spies <laughs> and Halloween episodes. Man, so you could tell having, George Michael still. Look at us having a full circle moment as we kick off our piranha era. Grace, <laughs> life is good. Life is good, man. We're on top of the world. <laughs> we are. Well, you can't stop us. The I'm world is our oyster and we are a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> That's what the piranha era is all about. That's like, that was like an AI generated, like, <laughs> adage. The world is our oyster and we are the weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> it makes no sense, but I'm using that so much going on, going forward. But it's the the person who I want to be in this world. So we're doing it. We're doing it live. <laughs> All righty. Be the it's Oppenheimer not- of your own life. <laughs> For I am death, the destroyer <laughs> of worlds. And this world is my oyster. (laughs) And I am my weapon of mass destruction. And until next week. (laughs) Bye. Bye. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in to Saturday Morning Mysteries. If you enjoyed this episode, please share, rate, review, leave us a like, and drop a comment. We post episodes every Saturday and bonus tune tangents whenever we feel like it. So please subscribe so you don't miss the shenanigans. And if you want to follow us on YouTube, click the bell under the YouTube subscribe button to receive notifications when new videos are posted. And if you want to subscribe to the podcast, we have no idea what you're listening to us on. So just hit the big subscribe button on whatever app you're using. We we believe in you. Give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Satmorn Mist, all the abreeds, and let us know if you have any episode or show requests by emailing Saturday Morning Mysteries at gmail.com. Thanks to Jenna Kendall for the logo design and to Ava Sakiki for the music used during this week's episode. See y'all groovy kids next week on Saturday Morning Mysteries. <laughs> <laughs>